right, so welcome everybody. Uh, this is our um, April 19th teaching and learning and UX call. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some of the results from the UX testing feedback on the uh, Sakai 23 portal UI changes. Um, but before we do that, uh, let me go ahead and just uh, remind everyone uh, by way of announcement, uh, SakaiCon is this summer in July. 18th and 19th, that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, with some team building activities happening on Monday at, the, at Dr. Chuck's Lake House. And the meeting itself will be at School of Information, University of Michigan. There will be most of the sessions offered online, but there will be a few things that you have to be there in person to attend. So um, we're hoping to give more of a face-to-face -face focus um, this time around. So hopefully uh, you can join us then, either in person or online. And um, let's see, I think that's it for announcements right now, unless anybody else has any announcements. All right, so I did put the link to the Etherpad in the chat. If you've not already signed in, please do. And let me share my screen, because I'm just gonna kind of go over um, the results of the testing that I did. So, uh, let's see here. Screen two. There we go. Okay, so you should be seeing the, the meeting notes. Um, and hi, Michael. Glad you could make it. So, um, I don't know if you all have had a chance to look at the um, the test script. I did put uh, some stuff here in this folder, which I'll, I'll paste the link in here for you guys in case you want to dive in deeper. Um, the recordings and the transcripts and all of that stuff, if you really have the time, um, it's available. So if you go in here, there's recordings of all the sessions and um, transcripts from Otter. They're not perfect, but they're okay. <laughs> and, um, but for a summary, um, these are my observation notes. And then the, the results here, I've kind of summar summarized in a more narrative form. Now, um, I think most of you have seen the new UI. Let me just go and review it briefly. All right, so I'm logged in right now as one of my, um, test users. So this is uh, the new navigation as it currently stands. So we've got the, the sidebar here. Um, we've got most recent sites. You can also pin sites. Um, you can pin them here. You can also pin them in the sidebar. Reload. All right, so the pin show up here. And you can um, collapse this just to kind of give folks an idea if you've not already seen uh, what it looks like when you um, navigate around. I think most people have, but just in case, and also for the recording in case people have not seen it a little bit. Um, so we uh, we had um, a good number of folks testing. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, and these are the results. So I'm just gonna kind of talk through this, but feel free to you know, chime in if you have questions um, or any comments as I go along. So we had 17 people who um, participated in the testing, and I've got a link there to the test script that I used. Um, I focused very tightly on navigation. I didn't go into a lot of tools to do anything within a tool because I really wanted to look at just the portal nav. Um, they were 30 minute by appointment via Zoom sessions that I scheduled over the last couple of weeks. And of the people who signed up, well, I, actually of the people who attended, we had a few more signed up that didn't show up. <laughs> they had either last minute uh, cancellations or whatnot, but three um, of the testers were faculty, five were more administrative, like director or manager types, and nine were instructional support folks, like instructional designers and, or the Sakai point person at their institution. Um, so we had a good range of different roles. And um, some people had never seen the new uh, 23 um, portal. Some people had seen it a little bit already. So a, a little bit of variability there in um, whether or not they'd seen the changes yet, but um, everybody was 
fairly familiar with previous versions of Sakai. So um, this was kind of our target group. We wanted to see how our existing users would transition from the change to from the top nav to the side nav. Um, so some of the things that I noticed um, across testers, most of the comments were generally positive. Um, people seemed to think that it looked clean and more modern. Um, and while it was different, there were still enough things that were familiar to them in the UI that it, it overall kind of felt comfortable. Um, and once they acclimated a little bit, um, they could find their way around. So um, some things that I noticed on the top versus the side nav that, again, users did tend to adapt pretty well to the change in location once they realized that that's what was going on. After, but there was some he initial hesitation on where to go to find their sites because initially when you go in, the only thing you see are your home sites. You don't see anything pinned. You don't see anything recent. Um, so it's just kind of home and nothing else. And people seemed a little bit lost. They didn't really know where to go. And then almost everybody gravitated to that site's waffle icon up in the top because that was a familiar component and they knew they could get to their sites that way. And once they found that, they tended to rely heavily on that top icon to get around. They did not use the links on the left as much. Um, some of them did after they were in there for a little bit. They, they tried, you know, kind of experimented with the links on the side. But um, most of the navigation happened in that top bar. And um, I also noticed that people didn't really expand the sites to view the tools under them very much. Um, a couple of people went over there just sort of exploring to see what it would do. But for the most part, in, in terms of navigating, people didn't really do that. They didn't tend to expand. Um, when viewing all sites, there's kind of a couple different places you can go to see that. There's the waffle at the top, and then there's a, 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 a link to the same place, the sites drawer um, in the bottom left of the nav sidebar. But um, there's also a view all sites button in the, um, the drawer, and that takes people to work site setup. So this was a little confusing to people because when I asked them, where would you go to view all your sites? They went to the drawer and then they kind of felt compelled, a lot of them to click on that view all my sites button that took them somewhere else. And so they weren't quite sure which is the real list of all my sites. Um, and then they also, a few people wanted to see which sites were pinned or not pinned on worksite setup, which is, is not information that's displayed there. So, um, so that was a little confusing to people. Um, in pinning, people really liked the, um, the concept of pinning over starring. Starring was not as familiar. So pinning was definitely a better mental model for that. Um, but people did complain a little bit that the pinned sites were hard to find. Um, a few people called them hidden. Um, because especially because they required scrolling to get to a lot of times um, if there's a long list of sites or if your monitor you know screen is a little bit smaller um, you have to scroll down to, to see the pinned sites at all so they they in general people preferred that at least the ones that indicated a preference preferred um, pin sites along the top um, some of that might be from habit um, but also some people said it was because they could see them all the time. They didn't have to scroll down to get to them. Um, and given the reliance of the, the site waffle, that that's like the number one place people went up in the top to navigate between sites, that's also the same place they tended to go to pin and unpin. Um, now, a few of them found the little pin icon in the sidebar as they were going through the test. So it, as they spent more time, they tended to discover it, but it wasn't quite as obvious initially. Um, and also when you pin something in the sidebar, it doesn't prompt you to reload. And so nothing happens at first. And a lot of people were confused, wondering if it was pinned or not. And then they would try to pin it again and actually unpin it. And so then it really wasn't pinned. So, um, so there was a little bit of confusion around that. Um, the sites in the sidebar tend to change dynamically depending on which site you're in. So uh, a few users commented that they were a little bothered by that, that they kind of um, felt like it was, they expected their site list to be a little more permanent. Um, 
and the way that sites would jump from pinned to current and her home would kind of disappear when they were within another site um, was a little disconcerting for people, um, at, at least at first. I don't know if that's something that would change with familiarity. Um, the behavior on landing on a page uh, when they clicked on the site. Um, when you navigate between sites and particularly when you go back to home, people wanted to see the overview, the first site or the first tool in the list. That's where they expected to go. So they were a little confused when they landed on a different page, even if it was the last page they were at in that course. A lot of times they didn't remember where they were in the course when they returned to it, and they would click the title again to try to refresh it. And um, so, it, and we also noticed that the behavior was different in the sidebar than it was in the breadcrumbs. So, um, so that could use a little bit of, of cleaning up and some standardization. Um, in collapsing and expanding that sidebar, um, people found it for the most part pretty well, um, but they didn't like the icon. The hamburger icon did not mean collapse expand to most people they associate that with a, a drop down menu a lot of them said so a chevron or an arrow something that looks more like an expand collapse icon should probably be replaced there um, and people were kind of mixed over whether or not to expand it some people really liked it or sorry collapse it some people really liked it but others kind of lost their sense of place when they collapsed it um, and also when it was collapsed, they couldn't jump to different tools without first expanding it. So that was a little bit of an adjustment there. Um, the account menu slide out, people liked it once they saw it. And, uh, and once they found the light dark mode toggle there, they liked that as well. Although most people went to preferences by default to locate the dark mode option. Um, in fact, it, to account menu, a lot of them didn't notice that it was it was all the way at the bottom. Um, so uh, a few people mentioned they would like to see it higher up so it's more discoverable. And there's also a log out button that's kind of high that could probably be swapped. And that's actually further down in my recommendations. Um, there was also a little bit of confusion about the terminology because the, the menu that slides out, the title of it says account menu. But there's also an account tool in home and they show you two very different things. So that was confusing to people because it had the same name. Um, the help was a little harder for people to find, but once they found it, they seemed to like the new location up in the global top nav. Um, and then the breadcrumbs, uh, again, people use the home link in the breadcrumbs pretty often, um, but a few of them mentioned that the location was a little weird because it was in front of the course. So initially they were kind of not sure if it was the home home or if it was the course home or which home it was. Um, and a couple of people said that the text was a little small on the breadcrumbs. Um, so these are my recommendations based on this feedback for the changes that I think we should make like right now, like before 23 hits the, hits the release. Um, so I think we should make new sites pinned by default that should help with discovery because people will see some sites in there when they log in. And, and if they have any current favorites, those current favorites should be pinned as well um, so that they're not kind of searching for things that they're used to being able to access quickly. Um, I also think we need to change the behavior on the site title. When the site title is selected, it should go back to the first tool in the list and it should be consistent for all sites including home, um, both in the sidebar and the breadcrumbs, because right now they work a little differently if you're navigating via breadcrumbs versus sidebar. Uh, when pinning sites in the sidebar, it should either reload automatically, like right away, or it should provide a prompt to tell people they need to reload, like it does when you do them in the drawer, because otherwise people don't know if it pinned or not. They don't see anything changing, and they wonder if, if they did it right. Um, I think we also need to change that expand collapse icon from the hamburger to something else. So maybe a chevron, maybe an arrow, something uh, a little more indicative of the action. Um, the, uh, the 
the theme selection option in preferences, it, it initially was not enabled on, um, on the test server that I was using. So I don't know if that's enabled by default, but if it isn't, it should be because that was the number one place people went to look for dark, dark mode. Even if the toggle was there, a lot of them didn't find it there because they were expecting it to be somewhere else. Um, thinking that we should swap the location of the dark light toggle with the logout button in the account menu. Um, and I, I can go back to the interface if you don't remember what it looked like, but it it's uh, the light dark is all the way at the bottom and logout is up at the top. So it seems kind of natural to switch those two um, so that the mode, the dark mode is, is a little more discoverable. Also, the, there's a little info icon in the sidebar next to the pins that gives you like the site description. Nobody clicked on that. <laughs> it's like, and and the people, a couple people found it as they were mousing around and sort of paused over it, but it doesn't really provide any information that they need to navigate. So I really, I think we should just get rid of that because it's taking up space and people don't appear to be using it. Um, and then there's also a little bit of um, repetition in the icons in home. A couple people commented on that. The preferences and worksite setup tools use the same cog. Profile and account use the same icon. So if we could make those a little more unique, uh, I think that would help people with recognition. And then um, those are all kind of the quick fixes that I think we can do quickly. Um, for future, I would recommend some additional potential review, uh, potential changes. So we might want to look into the feasibility of dragging and dropping to reorder because a few people um, tried to do that. They expect that in a lot of apps to be able to drag things. Um, and we might also want to update the worksite setup tool so that you can see which sites are pinned and possibly be able to pin or unpin from there as well. Um, since that's kind of where you end up if you go to view all my sites, view all my sites again. Um, and then we um, should probably also look at or, or clearing up the redundancy or confusion in tool names in home. For example, account versus account menu. Um, there's a profile preferences and then there's a separate preferences tool. So that was a little confusing for people. When they were looking for the dark mode preference, they kind of went to both places looking for it. Um, user membership and worksite setup do very similar things. So, you know, maybe we can combine those to kind of clean up the number of items that are there because the number of items in home pushes all the other nav further down the, the screen. So that's why your pin sites end up kind of hidden the more tools you have. Um, and then I would also recommend some additional discovery around the following things. So once people start using it a little more, I'd like to know if scrolling to get to those pin sites is a problem. Um, is that something that frustrates users or not over time? Um, also the dynamic changing of the sites where they kind of jump from current to recent to pinned. Um, is that going to be a problem or do people kind of get used to it? Um, and then also, do we need to treat home a little differently? Because it's kind of an oddball. It's a site, but it's not a site. And the, the designation of it in the, in the sidebar is a little weird, too, because it, 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 um, it disappears if you're in a site versus in home. Um, so maybe we want to think about incorporating all of those tools into the account menu and getting rid of home. Um, but that's a bigger change that needs more discussion. So that's kind of a for future thing to, to talk about a little bit more. So um, so anyway, I know I've been talking a lot. Let's um, kind of open up the floor and see if anybody else has any thoughts. I'll go back to the interface in case you want me to, to demonstrate any of the recommendations that I was talking about. So does anybody have any comments, questions, feedback? Just a thought about what you'd mentioned about possibly, you know, incorporating home into the account menu mm -hmm. is um, just the question of then the message of the day. If you use that to, you know, try to make sure students are seeing some important events coming up, will that still, how, how, we need to make sure mm -hmm. that that is still. Yeah, that's a really good point. That gets in front of their eyeballs. Yeah. 
Um, we might want to have a different way to, or different place that uh, shows up. I don't know. Or maybe just like one tool that's the where they land with the message of the day. Um, but no other tools, like none of the user tools. Maybe either they just get uh, overview or dashboard and everything else is under the account. Because if you clean this up, all these move higher. Um, and there's people also don't go to a lot of these tools often. They usually they come here and then they go into a site. So seeing all of these tools and pushing the nav down, I think, was a, a little bit of a unusual situation for people. At least that was my impression. But you're right, Christina, we definitely need to make sure that we don't lose the message of the day. It's generally outside of a student's experience unless they were creating project sites but something that i'm thinking about the tools that you go to less frequent frequently is i'm likening it in my mind to what instructors do with site setup within a site in order to choose their tool order or in order to choose the site tools if there would be a way to aggregate some of the less frequently used tools into a preferences page within home where you would have home overview and potentially profile and preferences and then go to preferences or settings in order to see those less frequently used tools i think that would make sense to christina's point i like that idea too because then that would also like we use the evaluations dashboard on and that's on the home page too so getting rid of home overall would cause complications <laughs> Hi, puppies. Getting rid of home overall would cause complications, but consolidating that list so there wasn't quite as many tools on home would really be a good idea. And I really like the idea of pinning or having the option to pin new sites automatically, like how now you can go in and choose yes or no. But for an inexperienced user, someone who's just coming in, having their newest sites automatically appear there on the side would make initial navigation so much easier. Yeah, I agree. And, um, and Adrian also noted in the chat that a lot of these like announcements, calendar, they already show up on either overview or dashboard, which we hope will take the place of overview. So those are already kind of there. You don't really need the link to them. It's just more links to bump everything down. I, I can't speak programmatically regarding how this could be pulled off. And fundamentally, the home site is a site and these sidebar tools are tools, uh, to my mind, just like a project site or a core site. It's just it's a special category. I'm thinking about the tool order tool within a project site or a core site where you can specify visibility to the student. So if a user could make those tools invisible to themselves or hidden and then go someplace the equivalent of tool order in order to unhide them you would also be giving the user the ability to control which tools show up in their own personal home sidebar Well, just, I don't know if this really addresses your, your question, but my first thought is that right now the dashboard, you some of that, you can add and remove widgets here and customize your own dashboard experience. If we could somehow, you know, put the, those tools here, or at least a link to them um, to get to those features that maybe you could just edit your dashboard and this also has message of the day on it as well my concern about having the users be able to control the visibility of tools on their home page is you have a clueless student who clicks around once hides half the stuff they need has no idea that they hit it until two days later when they log back in, 
can't remember where they went, can't find anything, decide not to call for help and try to just <laughs> manage through the semester with half of what they need. Yeah. So I need like, an, you know, for the course sites and program, um, project sites, there's normally an instructor in charge of that, someone who's been trained and has some level of clue. We have a large number of students where, you know, there is no clue. <laughs> I see Sean was saying that that's an unofficial feature now. I don't think I've ever tried that. So if you select home, that it selected. Oh, I'm in here as a student. Yeah, but no, you can but then go to tool order. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Huh. I learned something new today. Thank you, Sean. And Adam for suggesting it. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure that could be dangerous if people find it and hide things from themselves, but um, but that's good to know. See, I did it too. I, I clicked home thinking it was going to take me back. It's sort of habit because you're used to clicking here to reset. That's how the breadcrumbs work in, in sites. So if I go here, and I'm in a different tool. And then I click there, it takes me back. So that's the behavior people expect. So it needs to be consistent. Thanks so much, Wilma, for doing all the testing and putting the test plan together and going through it with all the participants and then summarizing that for us. A lot of information, a lot of useful information there. Um, and a lot of things to consider. And um, thank you to everybody that's put work into this new uh, new UI. It's uh, um, come a long way. Um, yeah, thanks, Sean. And thank you to you and, and Mike. You guys were the original um, designers <laughs> that came up with a lot of it. So um, so thanks to, to getting the ball rolling on that. And uh, hopefully it was implemented in a way that, that, you know, you're pleased with, I hope, anyway. Yeah, we, we uh, evolved the initial designs that we had when we were meeting with the designers many, many years ago um, that we uh, got involved with um, kind of reimagining Sakai. and. Um, I think what we have here is um, a good evolution of that, but I think there's probably the things that you've identified are probably um, showing that there's still more more work to do to to get to that final vision. Um, one of the things you noted, Wilma, was that when you first log in, it's not clear like where where to go as far as sites go. And so I recall from one of the early designs from the designers was to put sites on the um, on the home page or on that first page um, so maybe that will help encourage the dashboard as the first tool discussion um, yeah. and then having a spot here where you have your pin sites at the top or on a list or something like that like I think we need to evolve this dashboard more to make it more obvious to the people that are logging in. Okay, where do you go next? What are the site? Where are my sites? Um, I am a little concerned about the scroll down the side uh, 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 um, observation that that you saw um, with not being able to see sites. I'm also concerned about it with like for if you're in a site that has a lot of tools, then it's always going to be off your screen to go to the other sites. So that's interesting feedback regarding this this major change. Yeah, that's um, an excellent I, point, though, about dashboard. I thought of that, too. Um, I didn't want to throw too many new things into the mix, but that's an excellent point. Because originally, we had envisioned that there would be some sort of um, cards along here that for each course would have its own 
kind of card with a, you know, a little blurb about the course and maybe some icons for new activity. Um, and that would be the first thing that a user would see in home because they would land on the dashboard. Um, so that might be one way to, to make the list of courses a little more obvious to people. Yeah, I think that'd be very useful. I'm I'm interested with the reliance on the site waffle in the top right corner too. Um, in our original design, we had removed that out of there um, and and just left it in the bottom left as the as the place to put it. So it's interesting that that came back and that that was also relied on so much um, during testing. Um, yeah, I was a little surprised at how frequently people just kept going back there. It's like once they found it, they just kept going to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of it is that the one down here for all my sites, it's sometimes off the screen. So like here, you have yeah. to get to it. Um, so because it's there and not there and it's not reliable, they always know they can find it up here. And that's... I think why they kept gravitating. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh no. In our original design, yeah, that view all sites was supposed to be like frozen to the bottom there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. it would have gotten more use if it was con constantly there, but mm. because it it moved around, I think that may have influenced that and the fact that again, once people saw this and knew that they could get to their sites there, it was just sort of habit. They kept going back there automatically. Yeah. Yeah, that concerns me a bit, that the whole change is too much for people. But I'm also conscious that maybe our testers are more Sakai f familiar people, and so I'd, I'd be interested to know how this overall change of moving sites from the top to the side um, works out for new to Sakai users. Um, yeah, like unfortunately, if we, didn't just... have, we didn't have any brand new people in our pool, mm -hmm. um, but that would be interesting to see, um, you know, if, if they, because they're not going into it with certain expectations, would yeah. take to it differently. Because if people aren't finding the sites on the left-hand side, then I think moving them down there is more of an issue than adding to the experience, especially if they just are ending up relying on the site drawer in the top right corner, then at that point, we've just essentially just removed sites from the top rather than move them somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, a few people commented that this was a big black empty space and they thought yeah. it was a lost opportunity for something. Mm Yeah, in earlier designs, we had a permanent search bar that took up that space. Um, yeah, when we you have, have search, search but we don't have like a field that's visible all the time. We also Wait. used it for system alert uh, spaces, but that was just an extra button. So it wasn't like the whole space, but if you use the PA system. Mm. Adrian wants me to click the search. Okay, yeah, the search is a slide out. And actually, a few people went up there to look for help. Um, a couple people, or maybe one person, went up there looking for their sites. They just typed in the name of the course that I asked them to navigate to, and they didn't get anything, which is a little disconcerting. Um, oh, in search? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Because they didn't see anything. So let me let me see if I have a, an account that I didn't use. We can kind of go in fresh. Um, I think UX. Whoops. I'm in the wrong place typing. Yeah, our goal for the top right corner for all of the buttons and icons that are up in the top right corner was to make it a consistent experience of flyouts so that each one creates a panel and everything is done within that panel. I think the implementation has kind of veered a little bit away from that um, with the help and the and the site drawer. But um... yeah, so this is what a user would see, upon, or this is what the people in the test saw when they logged in. So when you yeah. go in fresh, you don't have anything pinned 
So I'm enrolled in several sites, but all I see here is home. Mm. And that's why people were confused. They're like, I don't know where to go. Um, and almost everybody went here. And then once they got there, they're like, oh, that's where my sites are. Mm. And then they started navigating back that way. Um, because a lot of times they, they didn't notice if something was pinned or not. Oh, and one thing I think I forgot to put in my note, there's a pin next to home, but you can't actually pin it. Hmm. Like if you, if you try to pin it, it still goes away and it never shows up under pin. Oh, well, it does show up under pin. <laughs> it does. Sorry. Somebody was saying you could pin it, but it didn't actually pin. I forget who that was. Um, maybe they just didn't see it down here. Could be. What if the sites drawer was another right hand flyout? <laughs> Sorry, <I'm> like <laughs> early spitballing here. And then, so we leave just the current site on the left, and it's just the current site and the tools on the left. But then the pin sites, recent sites, all sites are on the right hand side. I feel like we talked about that, Michael, when we were designing it, but I'm wondering if that would. Remember if we considered that option or not, but I mean, seems seems like it'd be worth testing. I guess, right? It would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we could, could test it. I don't. I don't know. I mean, we could make it a slide out if that's better for mobile, maybe. But um, in terms of functionality, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. For the it's just it's a separate modal that comes up, and they have a list. So it would just be moving it, you know, to come out from this way instead of appearing in the center. So I don't know if that's better or worse or the same. Well, it would address the concern of the or the the goal that I was trying to make of with that top right corner of making the like consistent experience. So when you click one of those icons, you know what you're getting. Um, yeah, I think the other ones are all slide outs. So yeah, except for help. Help was supposed to be a slide yeah, out. Yeah, help is a new tab, and this one is the modal. Okay, Adam, thanks for joining us. Oh, Adrian's saying that Earl was talking about making help part of the search index. I don't think we want to bury it under search, though. I think you, you should be able to, if you end up on search, you should be able to say, hey, I want to search help. But I think help needs to be its own thing. Um, yeah, my vision for help was that it would be an internal system that um, would like it would have its own back end, so you can control what the content of the help is inside the system, and then it would it would be contextual still, but it would be in the flyout, like I have in that mockup in that link that I put in the chat. That, that was a lot of implement, implementation work to do. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah. So if you're on assignments, you get the, like, here's a, here's the quick steps for assignments, and then learn more would take you to, like, the official help pages or whatever. Uh, where where's the conversations at for replacing overview with dashboard or making dashboard the first tool on home? 
The dashboard has um, has up till now still been experimental, um, but I believe it is out of experimental for 23. Am I right in that, Adrian? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure really. It's a bit it's a bit fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would definitely advocate for making it a regular tool in 23 because I think there's enough that has been done with the widgets to have people yeah. using it. And I think I think that based on based on what you've just been saying about all the you know, the number of tools that are in are in home, I, I think that makes it even more important that you know, like, like I said in the in the chat there. I mean, I think. You know, like announcements and assignments and stuff. I mean, the, you know, the synoptic views of those things. I mean, in the end, the student's just going to want to probably go into the site, click on something, and go into it. You know, where where the thing actually is. So that's yeah. the, the dashboard widget is perfect for that. You know, that that approach. You know, just a just a bit of info and a link. Right, click the link, you're in. You know, you get a deep link straight into the thing. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which will mean we could remove some of those tools, but um, yeah. It's a bit more work than he's doing there, probably. But I think the widgets that are in there are working okay now. I think I've, I've fixed most of the outstanding uh, kind of issues that, that were there. So I don't know. Maybe we need to talk about, you know, get this back on the on the table again, on the agenda, this conversation. Um, on a slightly different note, like Kunal the other day was talking about the tutorial you know, mm -hmm. updating the tutorial to point to all the new UI elements, right? And and like Earl said the other day, clear everybody's tutorial flags so that everybody gets the tutorial again with 23, yeah. right? I think that's that could be an important thing just, just to get people, you know, into the, into the flow of it. So I think there's a few discussions that we do need to have before, before the, uh, you know, the RC probably. Adrian, for the dashboard, can institutions um, configure which uh, widgets appear on the dashboard for particular account types or um, different people in general, like they can with home sites? Yeah, uh, you can configure which widgets appear for um, your home, for your home site, and for, you know, for a user's home site, and for a you know, for a course site, but not by account type, just by, you know, site For everybody, type. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can say these widgets are available to be picked and placed. So you can limit them, basically. Yeah, like what Christina said earlier, one of the benefits from an institutional perspective of the home site is the, the ability to customize the tools that do show up there, including which ones are default and adding additional ones. She mentioned the evaluation system, We've added uh, different types of uh, um, systems over the years to whether that was a web link or LTI tool or other tools to it. Um, so if we're talking about slimming down the list of tools on home and replacing that with access to it through the dashboard, then we want to make sure that there's feature parity there. Yeah, well, oh. I mean, it's, it's not as flexible as that at the, at the moment because all that stuff, based, as, as you know, it's all based on frames, isn't it? So literally all you're doing is dropping dropping a new place in a new tool into the placement are you um yeah insights yeah in, in the yeah. in the home site template yeah yeah exactly so, so um, uh, the answer is no you can't yeah. it's not as flexible as that no like you know if, if we wanted like this for instance the um evaluations right well you'd have to write a widget for it you know you'd have to go and write one you couldn't right. it's not just like something that sits in a frame you know what i mean it's a yeah. It's yep. a widget. It's just showing a boiled down, a boiled down uh, representation of the data. The announcements that we're seeing on the on the screen at the moment in the middle widget is that like your course announcements, or is that like message of the day announcements? Uh, message of the day appears in a separate thing. Oh. Yeah, message of the day yeah, is up here. Of the day appears at the top, but only if there's actually a message of the day. If there's oh, okay. no yeah. message, the bar doesn't. It also oh. starts collapsed, which I have a problem with. Yeah, it should start open. There's a Jira on that. My Jira. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that might be something we could look at um, for overview. 
uh, rep sorry, replacing overview. Do we have a, a sites widget, like a list of sites or pin sites or something like that to address the point that Wilma made in the summary? No, no, we don't. But go, go, uh, yeah, I actually wanted to pick up on that. So the cards, you know, the, the site cards that, that Bridget um, designed, mm -hmm. all the code is still there for those, right? All those or the kind of, or the, or the, I mean, I wrote some components for those, right? The components still exist, but they're just not used anyway. Yeah? So I've left them all in, in the code tree. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be like a separate tool. I know we don't want to have more tools, right? But I just feel that like those cards are massive, right? So imagine like if you had six of those course cards here, they'd have pushed all these widgets down, you know, and like, so then you wouldn't see it, the pertinent information about what's going on synoptically in your various places, right? You'd just see the course cards with a nice graphic for each course or whatever. Yeah? They, they will dominate in the actual dashboard. So I don't know whether you put those in here or you put them somewhere else. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? Each one of those is the, size, is the size of a widget. Each one of those course cards will potentially be the size well, it doesn't have to be. We could make it so that they are um, more compact and, and maybe just listed in one widget. Um, we could redesign them a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought I did a mock-up of that for this as well. Just a second. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, so, Wilma, on that um, on that mock-up page or link that we had, actually, I'll just put the link in the chat. It might be easier to get to. Um, Three to four cards equals one widget. <laughs> is this it? Was it on dashboard or my sites? Uh, I don't remember how to get work. home from the mock up. Uh, no, yeah, we're in a kind of a different mock up in there. So, yeah, you'd have to click on the link in the chat. Sorry. Oh, I thought I did. Oh, different link. Okay. Hey, who knows here? Yeah, yeah, I remember. We had a few different iterations of the cards. Yeah, that's familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't have to get fancy with all the icons and the new activity. I mean, as long as there's just like the list of sites, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, pictures are nice, but they don't even have to have a picture. Maybe a different color because people like to color code their stuff optionally. But um, but just the, the cards for the sites themselves, I think, would solve the navigation issue. <laughs> no, no, no bar at the side at all, then, right? <laughs> so the, it's the dashboard tool. <laughs> yeah, that was something that we had talk, discussed. That the the initially the when you're yeah. when you're logging in with the dashboard, yeah, that that mm -hmm. the sidebar collapses automatically for you or, or starts in a collapsed state um, because everything is called action on this page. Yeah, and once you go into a course, then it opens and you see the yep tools. But in this one, the, the are these pinned up here? And then most recent at the bottom? Or is this like all your sites <laughs> and most recent at the bottom? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, this is like an early version. I think they're pinned at the top, yeah. Personally, I kind of like having the pinned stay in one place and just sort of jump to the currently open one in the the scroll bar. Just because I don't like things hopping around, because I, I can't rely on where they're going to where they're where they're going to be, but that might be just my preference. Yeah, th things never used to hop around, did they? Well, like uh, Dr. Chuck raised a few concerns about the duplication of like uh, the size, right? So you've got mm -hmm. it, my current site, and it's in pinned as well, it's in recent. So we kind of now we kind of more intelligently, you know, we thought uh, remove them from various places as as you as you go into things, but obviously that makes people feel like things are hopping around. <laughs> well, they do, you know, like if it's a pin site, it's it's in pinned, and then you click on it, it moves to current site, and it's not in pinned anymore. So it's like, is it still pinned? Is it not pinned? Where did it go? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 
Yeah, I was trying to please everybody, you know. I know it's hard. It's really hard. I I sat down and was kind of brainstorming when I was putting my notes together, thinking, well, is there a better way? And I just I went down a rabbit hole. And after about an hour, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm just <laughs> I'm just going to summarize and let other people weigh in. <laughs> Yeah, it is hard cool. to make so, everybody happy. But. On the implemented design, so like back on Nightly, we do have the, or, or the you, you have the like headings there now for current site, most recent sites, and pin sites. I wonder okay, if those just have, have to be some container. sort of expanding uh, container that is fixed so that those are always on the screen no matter what state they're in. And they just kind of like pile up at the bottom when they're collapsed. Because I think I think you're right. I think they need to be consistent, and I think they need to be uh, ever present, mm -hmm. so well, that you, it you avoids that jump around. Yeah, you, you mean off pin size is like a collapsible thing, right? Is that what you, yeah. is that what you mean? Yeah, right. But fixed to the bottom. So, like in my original design, we had the view all sites, uh, all my sites button as a as a um, static button in the bottom so it was um, frozen to the bottom of that panel so it's always there no matter where you're scrolling and the scroll happened above it if the pinned sites category and the more uh, and the recent sites category happened um, as well as uh, uh, um, showing up as expandable buttons but when they're collapsed they're they're piled up above them it'll take up a little bit more room all the time but the scrolling would always happen above them or within them and and then they wouldn't get you, you wouldn't lose the sites as much yeah i get you right you see you, you, I'm, I'm, it sounds to me like you, you're talking about like a bit like a, of an accordion so i was almost about to say that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah view all my sites would be like two more rows or whatever right which can be expanded so yep yeah. yeah technically yeah it is an accordion that's contained within the viewport or the the screen size height of the sidebar yep yeah yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, it took up a bit more room, but at least it is familiar. It's it's not moving around. Yeah, we're straying away from some of the original inspiration of the design, um, but I'm 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 seeing the results now from the testing. Well, this is it, you know. When, when you start you start reaching out to the community, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you see how people actually use it, that's where it yeah. really. Because some of this stuff didn't really crystallized for me like i i had seen the hamburger and i didn't really pay much attention to it because i knew what it did but then when people were like looking for it and not finding it and they're like oh it's a hamburger yeah. i expected that to be a carrot i'm like yeah <laughs> that's exactly yeah. right I mean, so, you've been using I mean, carrots everywhere else for, for that so yeah. yeah so i mean there's a lot of little things like that that i once people said it i was like oh absolutely in my head but um, but yeah, until you see how people actually navigate, it's very hard to anticipate sometimes. One thought that I had, and I don't know if it quite works. And like I said, this is part of the rabbit hole I went down yesterday and then I just decided to cut my losses. But <laughs> I was kind of thinking that, um, you know, the current site and the pin site, these headings, it's sort of a lot of text and they move around. And what if we don't tell people that they're pinned? We just show them the pin, you know, because like I had a few people going back here to see if they had pinned something or not, because they weren't sure if it pinned because it didn't prompt them to reload. And they saw the filled in pin and they're like, OK, that's pinned. So maybe the pinned sites aren't labeled pinned. They're just you know, up at the top and they have a pin. Yeah, we show the pin, right? You set up on a home of, Yeah. And then, you know, maybe home is just always at the top, no matter what. It doesn't like disappear when you go to another site. And maybe the site that you're in, instead of saying current site, it's highlighted. Like it's a different color. So people can quickly tell. Because a lot of people were looking they'd navigate and they're like, wait, which course am I in? And they would look up here and they would look over here to read it because they couldn't mm -hmm. tell where they were. Um, so maybe we highlight the current site and just kind of slide up and down um, in in one predictable we, list. We, I don't know. Yeah, we'd still move the current site to the top. To the though, top. Right? Yeah. 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 
but you would go up and home would be above it. Or if they were, if you, they were pinned in a certain list, you'd see site one, two, three, site one, two, three would still stay there, but maybe you'd, you'd go down to site three and then site one and two would be above it. I don't know. Like these are just thoughts. I don't know if it works a hundred percent, but I was brainstorming. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree, really, yeah. You know, uh, do we need current, when we're highlighting the current tool you're in, <laughs> we need current site, like that, that label? I don't know, yeah. I don't yeah, think, I mean, if you're not. highlighting it, like overview is really obvious, I'm in overview, but which site am I in, in overview? Um, if this was highlighted and this, maybe two slightly different colors or, or something, maybe one's outlined in bold, I don't know. Um, but an indication for both the site and the tool. Um, you wouldn't have to tell people that that's the current site because they know, okay, I'm in that site because it's highlighted. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was a, a part of the original design too. Um, if you go to your Sakai strap tab there, uh, we have your pin sites. And then when you open it, when you're on the site that you're pinned, we're not moving that site out of pinned. It's still listed under the pin sites and you're just activating it like in place so it's bolded uh it could have highlighting too but um it, it's it's just showing that um so yeah, then if it, you, doesn't, it doesn't move it homes up here all the time yeah so i think the original idea was that we weren't going to be moving the sites around but we were just going to be opening them within the order that they are always in and I think that's what I'm kind of hearing you saying now, Wilma. Is that yeah, the... I think that makes more sense because you kind of have a more predictable location. Even if you have to go up and down, if you know nursing is at the top, you know it's always at the top. Yep. It's not going to jump down to recent or current or this one's going to be at the top and then they can't get back to home, you know? Yeah, and that's and that's like Michael said in the chat where where the inspiration came from for the sidebar, which was like that slack like where you have your channels along the side and and then you're going underneath them. So um, you, uh, you you just scroll down the list to the the next topic or channel that you want to go to. In our case, sites or tools. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Michael's saying that's more like Slack works. So these are more changes than I proposed because I didn't want to dump a bunch of work on you, Adrian and Canal. <laughs> but um, you know, if you think well, that there's more the time, we could we could kind of sketch some of this out in a little more. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I think just, so. I think we can find you know uh, the intersection of the things we've, we've, we've just been talking about, right? And we can just work on those to begin with, right? So like, for instance, don't store the last site and tool the user was in and then take them back into that and expand it all because that's confused people. Yeah. Let them re-navigate. Re so how, how, however we redo that navigation on the left, just that concept of not storing that stuff anymore, that's something we can work on straight away. Mm -hmm. It's an easy, a really easy change. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's what we need to do. I think we find the intersection of what we've just been talking about and get those things done first, right? And then see how much time we've got left, basically. And then maybe rework the the way they collapse and expand in the ordering if we if we have time. That yeah, I mean, good. ideally, ideally, we'd like to be able to get some of this stuff done, and then you you know potentially revisit some of this stuff with with this some of the same, you know, people that you. Yeah. I mean, if there's time, I'm happy to do it another round after we've implemented some changes to That'd see if great. this sort of scheme works a little better for people. Um, I mean, it seems to make sense based on some of the feedback that we've gotten so far, but um, yeah, if you want me to kind of write it up a little more organized, I can. I didn't include it in here because I thought it would be too much to do um on short notice but and it looks like google signed me out um <laughs> but uh yeah i i, I think it because it's a big change and if we introduce a big change and then we change the change you know people are going to be annoyed so if we could make a few more tweaks so that it's a little more final form when 23 rolls out that would be ideal yeah, I agree. Yeah, this I mean, is such a big change that I think it needs to be revised and perfected before um, it can go out if we change things afterwards. And yeah, it's going to be yeah. confusing. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, we could, we could get rid of that current site label. I mean, the more I look at that now, the more I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this bold, your know, bold EME. Yeah. Like, like, don't right. tell me what site I'm in. I know what you're in. <laughs> <laughs> I just clicked it, you know. That's, that's yeah. the thing. So if we're not storing the last, the last site and tool, then they've literally just clicked on it. It, it makes it an even stronger case for getting rid of that label there. Yeah. You know? Because they've just navigated to it, they know exactly what they've just done. So, yeah, I think you need to put more emphasis on the site title itself, uh, um, mm -hmm. and and make sh make it look more like a heading uh, than just another tool there, because it's it's kind of got the same width as the um, the tools, and so it's kind of just get, gets lost, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think if In you can make eye... that wider and and offset it a bit more, um, then it would. Uh, yeah, it needs to pop because my eye goes directly to the highlighted thing. You know, yeah. I skip over mm. that completely. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So yeah, things like that, things like that are definitely easy, easy pickings, right? And if we can just get a bunch of those done and then give you time to, you know, to go back to go back to people, mm -hmm. then we can still get a lot of this stuff done and and tested you know, before, before yeah, we cut the... absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. the testing really doesn't take that long if I get people... Coming, I mean, Mike. We, could, we could do it in a day if we can get enough people sign up for the same day, you know? I did it over a couple of weeks just because it worked with my schedule, but, um, you know, I can block off a day on my calendar to do just testing. Right. Well, so. I'm sure uh, I'm sure Kunal is, is eager to get going on this stuff. <laughs> I know I am. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I know I know we're over time, so I know Michael had to run, and and Sean has to go too. So yeah, I appreciate geez, you guys. Yeah. Appreciate you guys coming and staying a few minutes extra. So thank you, and um, hopefully we'll have one more iteration to show you before release, at least. I'm glad we brought up this current site and pin site. Uh, this whole thing it doesn't look good. We should have done it before, but I'm glad somebody brought it. Now we're going to fix it. Yep. Great. Yeah. yeah. It's the blindness that comes from we're seeing it every day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So having fresh yeah. eyes on it does make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at it. Look at it there. It's horrible. Current style. <laughs> it's Ugh. just an eyesore. Yeah. <laughs> and pin sites, too. It's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well i'm gonna let you guys go but uh thank you so much for joining and um and we'll be doing a, a another round of testing um hopefully soon um so thanks for all your feedback and uh, we'll keep at it till we get it fixed yeah thank, thanks to you wilma thanks for thanks for doing this thanks for setting this up it's really good yeah happy to do it all right cool. take care guys that's, you know.